In this lesson, we'll apply an alternate strum pattern with mutes to a progression of diatonic triad bass shapes in the key of E. Here's how our exercise will sound. First, let's walk through the chords used in the exercise. We're going to start with an E chord or our one chord, then move to F sharp minor or minor two, then to G sharp minor or minor three, and then, and then to, to A, A for our four chord. chord. Let's work let's through this, this one, one, minor two, minor three, and four chord progression with whole note rhythms. Starting on E, one, two, three, four, F sharp minor, three, four, G sharp minor, three, four, and A, two, three, four. For our strum hand, we're going to play an alternate strumming pattern with mutes. We're going to count one, two, and three, four. That was down, down, up, three, four. Notice how I'm resting on beats three and four by muting my strings with my strum hand. Let's play through this exercise repeated five times with the chords and strumming pattern. We're going to end on an E with a whole note. Get ready and I'll count us in. One, two, three, four, E, three, four, F sharp minor, three, four, G sharp minor, three, four, and A, three, four, E, three, four, three, Nice job. Try creating your own unique progression using these diatonic chords in the key of E. Have fun, and we'll see you later. It's going to be hard to do this lesson. My neighbor next door to me is, I, is talking on the phone, and he's really laughing his butt off. Okay, chords. I'm not good at doing hard chords, so I'll probably be doing um, power chords. Um, more likely be doing power chords by the looks of it, but I'm going to attempt to do the um, uh, bar chords right here because I do need to learn them and be able to do them. Now, I know the E chord, and I know the A chord. So I'm basically going to replace um, these chords with power chords. And I'm going to be using the uh, uh, two note power chords. In this lesson, we'll apply an alternate strum pattern with mutes to a progression of diatonic triad bass shapes in the key of E. Here's how our exercise will sound. 
First, let's walk through the chords used in the exercise. We're going to start with an E chord for our one chord, then move to F sharp minor or minor two, then to G sharp minor or minor three, and then to A for our four chord. Let's work through this one, minor two, minor three, and four chord progression with whole note rhythms. Starting on E, one, two, For our strum hand, we're going to play an alternate strumming pattern with mutes. We're going to count one, two, and three, four. That was down, down, up, three, four. Notice how I'm resting on beats three and four by muting my strings with my strum hand. Let's play through this exercise repeated five times with the chords and strumming pattern. We're going to end on an E with a whole note. Get ready, and I'll count us in. One, two, three. Three, four, E, three, four, F sharp minor, three, four, G sharp minor, three, four, and A, three, four, E, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four, E, three, four, F sharp minor. Nice job! Try creating your own unique progression using these diatonic chords in the key of E. Have fun, and we'll see you later. Let's move to the last section. Oh well. Here's the main riff to Last Time for Everything by Brad Paisley. It's a two-bar phrase with arpeggio picking and palm music. Sounds a little like this. One, two, three, and four, and. So for my fret hand, I've got four chord shapes. Let me walk you through them. The first is G major seven. This may be a new fingering or chord voicing for you. My index finger is rooted on the third fret of low E. My ring finger is on the fifth fret of A. And my middle finger is on the fourth fret of the D string. Then I'm also gonna play an open G string. This is G major seven. From there, I'll transition to an E minor add nine. This is very similar, a power chord shape. I'm gonna play open low E, my root's there. Now my index finger's on the second fret of the A string, my ring finger's on the fourth fret of the D, and I'm also gonna play open G on this chord as well. This is E minor add nine. From there, I'm gonna do a two finger C chord. So my middle finger is rooted on the third fret of the A string, and my index finger is on the second fret of D, and then I have the open G again. From there, just take this fingering and move it up two frets. Now we have D add four. 
My middle finger is rooted now on the fifth fret of the A string. My index finger is on the fourth fret of D. And open G stays common for all of these chords throughout. So let me walk you through the progression in terms of our fret hand. It's a two bar phrase. In measure one, we just stay on G major seven for four beats. One, two, three, four. And then we have a little bit more action in measure two. On beats one and two, I'm gonna be on E minor add nine, one, two. Then on beat three, C, and on beat four, D add four. So measure two is E minor add nine, one, two, then C for the third beat, and D add four for the fourth beat. Let's just walk through that once, just strumming each chord once to get used to where they fall in the progression. So starting with that G major seven. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, E minor, add nine, two, and C, and D, add four, just like that. So let's get into the strum hand. We're gonna be concentrating on down picking some 16th notes and a couple of eighth notes, and we're palm muting. So in measure one, we get our main, main pattern over that G major seven chord, and it looks like this. One, and a, two, and a, three, and a, four, and a. So it's a lot of movement and a little bit of fast picking. So let me show you the pattern. It's a pattern over two beats. So I'm gonna play from low E, three strings in a row. I'm gonna play E, A, D, then go back to A. Now skip to G. You still with me? Now go back to A and do three strings in a row. A, D, G. So one more time, we start on low E, play three strings in a row. E, A, D, a, skip to G, now back to A, and three in a row, A, D, G. Now the count on this, these are steady 16th notes over two beats, so I'm gonna play three, four, E, and a, one, E, and a, two, E, and a, and that's repeated, three, E, and a, four, E, and a, and that's that first measure. Why don't you try it with me as best you can right now? I'm gonna do this real slow. One. One, a two, E, and a three, E, and a four, E, and a one, two, three, four, E, and a. So in measure two, we change chords to the E minor add nine, but we stick with the exact same arpeggio picking pattern. We're hitting all the same strings on all the same beats, but we've changed the chord so the sound changes. But let's go through it again just to be detailed. So we're gonna go E, A, D, A, G, A, D, G, just like before. Now on beat three, we're gonna change to that C chord and we're gonna change our arpeggio pattern a little bit. We're gonna lighten it up a little bit. We'll play three, E, and a. Uh. So just palm mute on that third fret, on that root note, one, E, and a. Uh. And then you can open up. And now slide up to that D add four and do the exact same thing. Just palm mute on the root note, four, E, and a. Uh. So on beats three and four, I have three, E, and a, uh, four, E, and a, uh, just like that. Let's try measure two together from our E add nine chord. Do your best with me on this. One, two, three, E, and a, uh, four, E, and a, uh, one, E, and a, uh, two, E, and a, uh, three, E, and a, uh, four, E, and a. Uh. Okay, let's put the whole riff together. We'll play through it twice. Do your best to stay with me, okay? So grab that G major seven chord, I'll count you in. One, two, three, E, and a four, E, and a one, two, three, four, E, and a one, two, three, E, and a four, repeat, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, E, and a four, E, and a. And there's your riff. Okay, go and practice those chords because I don't know them. Um, let's see, D or G major seven. Tips three.
Okay, I've done this here before. It is a shame. Here's the main riff to Last Time for Everything by Brad Paisley. It's a two-bar phrase with arpeggio picking and palm muting. Sounds a little like this. One, two, three, and four, and. So for my friend hand I've got four chord shapes let me walk you through them the first is G major 7 this may be a new fingering or chord voicing for you my index finger is rooted on the third fret of low E my ring finger is on the fifth fret of A and my middle finger is on the fourth fret of the D string then I'm also gonna play an open G string this is G major 7 from there, I'll transition to an E minor add nine. This is very similar, a power chord shape. I'm gonna play open low E, my roots there. Now my index finger's on the second fret of the A string, my ring finger's on the fourth fret of the D, and I'm also gonna play open G on this chord as well. This is E minor add nine. From there, I'm gonna do a two finger C chord. So my middle finger is rooted on the third fret of the A string, and my index finger is on the second fret of D, and then I have the open G again. From there, just take this fingering and move it up two frets. Now we have D add four. My middle finger is rooted now on the fifth fret of the A string. My index finger is on the fourth fret of D. And open G stays common for all of these chords throughout. So let me walk you through the progression in terms of our fret hand. It's a two-bar phrase. In measure one, we just stay on G major seven for four beats. One two, three, four, and then we have a little bit more action in measure two. On beats one and two, I'm gonna be on E minor add nine, one, two, then on beat three, C, and on beat four, D add four. So measure two is E minor add nine, one, two, then C for the third beat, and D add four for the fourth beat. Let's just walk through that once, just strumming each chord once to get used to where they fall in the progression. So starting with that G major seven. One, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, four, E minor, add nine, two, and C, and D, add four, just like that. So let's get into the strum hand. We're gonna be concentrating on down picking some 16th notes and a couple of eighth notes, and we're palm muting. So in measure one, we get our main, main pattern over that G major seven chord, and it looks like this. One and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So it's a lot of movement and, and a little bit of fast picking. So let me show you the pattern. It's a pattern over two beats. So I'm gonna play from low E. Okay, this is a bit advanced for me, but <clears throat> I'm going to uh, do this on my own, on my own speed. And I'm not palm muting, because as I said, it's advanced. <laughs> Thank 